So you decided to become a CEO and finally start your event designing business. But finding your first client is a pretty big struggle. Now maybe you've reached out to successful event designers to see if they were willing to help and share their expertise. But nobody's reaching out. People are going ghost. What do you do now? No worries. Of course, as always, I got your back. So in today's video, I'm actually going to help you learn how to get your first client as an event designer. And if you stick around to the end, I'll actually throw in a bonus about how to get back-to-back -back clients for your event business. So stay tuned. Hey designers, welcome back to my channel with my inspiring designs with me, Justine, where all I want to do is inspire the event designer in you. If you're just getting started with your event business and you want to become a successful event designer, I suggest that you click the subscribe button and the bell to get notified on all of my future videos that I do here on my channel. So first starting out, when it comes to running an event business, there are some things that you need to do even before you actually get your first client in order to attract clients to your event business. So if you're interested, I'm going to walk you through the tips that I've used in my own business along with my one-on-one -on -one coaching that I actually do when I coach my designers who are struggling with the same problem and they really want to build a profitable business, then make sure you stay until the end because I'm also going to not only teach you how to get your first client as an event designer, but how to get back-to-back -back clients and keep them coming back because what is a business without clients? Just an expensive hobby. So the first thing you actually want to do when you want to attract your first client as an event designer is you have to switch your mindset from an employee mindset to an actual CEO mindset. Now there are a lot of people who are going to talk about mindset all day long, but what the heck does that even mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. So as a CEO, a lot of us, or beginning CEOs, a lot of us come into the business world with an employee mindset, and we're only worried about what employees worry about. So think about your 9-to-5 job. What are the tasks that you have to do to complete your job, correct? There's always a boss or an executive director or somewhere that is above your position who are making different decisions and different type of tasks that they're doing that is not like you as an employee. And that's where our mindset needs to be. Instead of focusing on a $10 an hour task that maybe an administrative assistant has to do or a social media specialist can do or... I don't know, uh, an assistant to your event business. Think about those tasks that people have to do. And instead, you really have to focus on the tasks that are going to generate $1,000 or $5,000. What are those tasks that you have to do in your business that are going to generate income for your business? That's how you attract your first client. When you stop thinking like an employee and you think like a CEO. Now you may ask yourself, Justine, well, what are you talking about? I don't even know what it takes to be a CEO, let alone have a CEO mindset. Well, I'm glad you said that to yourself, if you did. <laughs> Some examples that are that $1,000 task or $5,000 task are marketing your business. Okay, you need leads into your event business. So how do you market your event business? That's something you would want to tackle on. Write three things down. How do you get your business out to the public? Another example is how do you generate sales in your business? Some of you have gotten the experience of booking a client who maybe was a family or family friend. Well, either way, technically speaking, if even if you got a small sale, that still counts as money that's generated in your business. So my question to you is, how can we 10x that? What is the efforts or the task that will help generate more sales in your business that you can do right now that will help you attract that first client? A CEO mindset has to make business decisions that are going to be uncomfortable, which is like charging higher prices. They're going to have to generate sales and figure out a creative way that's going to help them stand out of the crowd. Because a lot of people think, well, it's so saturated. Why am I going to sit here and dive in? You're diving in because you want to do this business. 
Okay, but it's not saturated because there's no one like you. Business decisions doesn't mean that you just construct plans. You have to invest your money into experts that have done it before you. I'm letting you know right now, I did not make my first sale without my mentor. They are giving me a fast track of all their mistakes, all of their experiences, and now I can generate sales a lot quicker. You cannot DIY this. No matter where you are, no matter if you're watching this video, a CEO is not worried about the amount of money that they have to spend to push through to get the skills that they need to generate sales. Okay, an employee is worried about the amount of money. What a CEO is, is like, well, how do I generate money so I can get more skills and creative ways and business sales and techniques and tools that I need to continue to climb the ladder of monetary goals? And this is why I'm shifting my inspiring designs to really focus more on the business side of it because the business side is a lot of mindset shifts that you have to make. A lot of people are not ready for it. So I'm going to prepare you and what's expected when it comes to running a business. One of my designers actually struggled with a mindset shift when it came to her business. And she didn't know how to build a profitable business. She didn't know how to attract clients as an event designer. Working together, we were able to not only construct a plan that was ideal and customized for her, but to really build a clientele that will help her generate sales in her business. The next thing you want to do on how to get your first client as an event designer is you need social proof. Now, what is social proof? Social proof just proves what you can do for your future clients. This is basically the evidence to support your skill. A lot of people do social proofs on their websites or the social media. Those are the most popular ways to kind of tell the world, their audience, why one, people should follow you because of what you do, and two, why people should book you. Because remember, as a CEO, you need to generate sales. In order to generate sales, you need to attract the right client. In order to attract the right client, you need to show them what you can do. We are in an industry where if you don't have proof, I hate to tell you, it's going to be very hard to book a client unless they trust you. And that's usually the case. Sometimes it takes family and friends to go about it first. Some of y'all stay on that wagon, that hamster wheel of going on and on with family and friends. Honey, family and friends are only there to showcase what you can do so other people can pay you. It's not to continue staying in your comfort zone. That's where a lot of you live. Get out, get going, and let's generate sales. Not only does social proof help get you the client as an event designer, but it builds validation that you are capable of doing something that they need help with. There is no one like you, and there's no one that can do what you do. Are there multiple balloon stylists and event designers across the world? Absolutely, but everyone has their own style. It validates that, yes, you should spend your money on me because this is what I can do. And that takes practice and that takes time. But if you're working on it now, the clients will come knocking on your door versus you knocking on theirs. The next thing that you need to do when it comes to getting your first client as an event designer is practice makes perfect. I think in every video that I have done so far when it comes to advice for business owners and event designers is you have to practice what you do. I know you guys don't or like, well, I got to spend all this money and buy all this. No, first of all, if you don't watch this video right here where I talk about the common mistakes that most event designers make when they first start, make sure you go watch that because I clearly state you should not be purchasing everything and anything. I don't even care if there's a sale. If it doesn't generate you income and you don't have money coming in your business, do not spend more than what you have to. Okay, remember, you're a CEO. CEOs is all about investing. We have to invest our time, our money, our effort. As you get better and develop your creative skill, this is increases your chances of getting your clients. Now, it may not be ideal at first, and you will start to filter out what people, what kind of clients you want to work with. But this is a great way to start. When you practice, I want you to take lots of pictures, lots of videos, and send it to everyone and anyone because at the end of the day, people need to see what you can do. What are you capable of? You are in the beginning stages of your business. Show me what you can do. You have to replace the old habits 
of thinking people are just going to book you just because you say you started a business to new habits and investing time, money, and energy into generating those sales in your business. So the next thing you want to do when it comes to learning how to get your first client as an event designer, you want to get those raving reviews. A lot of you guys know what a bandwagon is. It's when someone jumps on the winning team just because they're winning. But you got to ask yourself, why is that? Why do people join teams or other things when other people are doing it? So when they see people purchasing, when they see people writing reviews, they're like, oh, this must mean that such and such is a really great event designer and I got to book them. Okay, your reviews speak louder than anything in the world. It speaks louder than your social media posts. It speaks louder than your stories, your captions, your websites. I mean good pictures probably speak just as loud but reviews just kind of like tied up in a knot and on a silver platter and serve it to your clients a lot of people when they do big purchases because an event designer you are charging a pretty high ticket offer and if you're not that's another problem don't worry we're going to get into that later on in my future videos but anyways you should be offering pretty high ticket offer so a lot of people when they purchase they have that herd mentality right well if everyone's going right i'm gonna go there too well me if everyone's coming towards me i'm leaving the other way i ain't gonna wait and see <laughs> But that is the herd mentality. The herd mentality basically tells a group of people like, hey, follow. A big mistake a lot of event designers make is not getting testimonials, not getting reviews. I don't care if they're your family. You tell mom, hey, mom, can you write a new review for me and so I can post it on my website and my social media? Hey, auntie, can you write me a review? Hey, friend, hey, sister. Hey, baby nephew. I mean, that's pushing it, but you get what I mean. Speaking of testimonials, when I was working with one of my event designers right here, she went from booking one client $85 for an engagement party, right? To booking that same client a few weeks later for their actual wedding, which was a $400 install. Can we get an amen? Let's just clap it up. Okay. But that's the type of results you need when it comes to your business because reviews and testimonials speak more than what you do in your business. The next thing you want to do when it comes to learning how to get your first client as an event designer is building relationships. You want to build relationships with your clients and it starts before they pay you. When a client is DMing you or when a client inquires about your service, what is the client experience? Is it, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I hear some links, here's some this, here's some that. How are you building relationships with your client before they purchase? What is the client's experience that they go through before they pull out their wallets and give you their money? When you spend time and really nurture not just the clients who don't pay, but the clients who do for obvious reasons, this really makes them good. If you give the best quality service, if you over deliver and under promise your designs, you will go further with your business than anyone around you. And that is a huge secret tip. Just like the reviews speak for themselves and they make the clients before, the potential clients to feel really good, a client's experience, when you build that relationship and they feel real good, I'm letting you know right now, they can now develop into a long-term clientele. This actually leads to loyal customers long-term. And when you build that relationship and you really nurture those clients, they'll love you forever. Humans really thrive off a human connection. You cannot post your designs anymore and think you're just going to get clients. Because you could have the best designs, the most beautiful designs. You probably follow companies like this. But then if your clientele has a terrible experience, what does that say about you and your brand? We're going to talk about how to brand your event business in future videos as well. But this is a great start when you build that human connection with your future clients or your clients who have booked you, it can have long lasting effects. So always remember that even though you may not have a client, 
you still want to think about, well, what is the experience that they go through when they inquire about my business? Now, I told you guys that if you stick to the end, I'll actually teach you guys how to get back to back clients and what you should be doing now. So in order for you to get back to back clients when it comes to being an event designer is you want to develop a loyalty program for the clientele that have booked you before. Now, you may say to yourself, Justine, how am I going to build a loyalty program when I ain't got no clients? How do you do that? Well, I'm so glad you asked. If you're not getting clients, this is where the research comes in. You have to work on your business versus working in. When you're working in, you're an event designer, you're thriving, you're really an employee, right? That's the employee portion where you can hire someone to technically do that work. But a CEO, you cannot hire someone to do a CEO. I mean, you can. You can hire someone as a CEO, but let's just not go there down that rabbit hole. Let's just pretend that you can't hire someone for your business as a business owner. You want a way that a client feels so valued with your business that they are willing to stay with you long term for every single event that goes on in their life. Loyalty programs actually make clients feel really valued like a VIP and you can call it a VIP. Take that name. Run with it. Okay, maybe be creative with the name, but this helps with the previous lesson, which was building those relationships. Clients will then feel really special. They'll feel really recognized with your business, which creates higher retention. Remember, you want your clients to come back. What do you want your clients to feel when they book you? Because when your clients feel appreciated and feel valued and special and really recognized in your loyalty program or your reward system program, that builds an emotional connection to your brand. When people build that emotional connection, when you have that human experience and human connection with a brand, now it's just take off. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a big like. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you're interested, I dropped some gems and tips and tricks in my free Facebook group. Make sure you click the link down below because... I'm there giving advice all the time. So if you're interested, you have to be an event designer. You have to answer all the questions. Make sure you do it. It's free of charge. It's just for you guys. And I hope you continue designing your dreams into reality. Bye. Hey, designers. Welcome back to my... Let's try this again. <laughs>